we make ready a people prepared for the Lord.
together. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, 
and then you will have good success. Hallelujah. As we meditate on the word of God, may that be our portion in Jesus' name. With Jesus' joy in our heart, I want us to welcome the mad peace of the Lord for what God has given him to minister to us. Let's celebrate Apostle Richard Takim. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a big, big, big clap of praise. us to close our eyes as we pray. Just begin to speak to the Lord wherever you are. Either you are here in the hall or you are at home following us. Just close your eyes and begin to pray and just speak to the Lord. Ask the Lord to speak to us today. Ask the Lord to speak to us today. Just open your mouth and pray. that God will open our eyes to see things that we ought to see. He will give us the spirit of quick understanding. Every one of you at home, pray along with us that the Holy Spirit will rest upon you, that the power of the highest will overshadow you as his word comes forth. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Ask the Holy Spirit. So ask the Lord, let your spirit come upon me. Let your power overshadow me. This is the first Sunday of the month. The first Sunday of the month of April. A season for Easter. A season where we are going to mark the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So open your mouth and pray that God will give you a word today. That will bring the blessing of the season upon your life. The blessing of this season much more upon your life upon your family seasons come with blessings they come with breakthroughs they come with turn around that the spirit of the living god will rest upon us his power will overshadow us and god will execute his will in our lives god will grant us the breakthroughs we need as we look at this world he will grant us the interventions the deliverances, the understanding, and everything we need. Lima Setele Cabo Setele. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, be my comforter. Holy Spirit, take control. Hallelujah, I am traveling along the way, the way is so narrow, Holy Spirit, lead me home, lead me home, Holy Spirit. shadow us afresh as we look at matters of the perfect love of liberty I link up myself to you the fountain of our wisdom and the fountain of our understanding and I link up everyone to you O oh God either here in the hall or at home or wherever they are on the face of the earth to you the fountain of all wisdom and the fountain of all understanding come and speak to our heart fulfill your will in our lives in Jesus name we pray God oh, bless you. May have your seat. Hallelujah. Put on together for Jesus. Hallelujah. I say put on together for Jesus, not for me. Amen. We thank God for the mercy he has granted us to bring a word again today, the first Sunday of April. And uh, by God's grace, we come on this uh, platform 
the Citizen TV, the Money Cloud Television, and other platforms with an international broadcast the first Sunday of every month. And today, it pleases God that we look at what I've titled the Bible, our eternal companion. Can we say that? Say the Bible, the Bible. our eternal companion. Say again, the Bible, the Bible. our eternal companion. Matters about the Bible are not things that can be explained just in, in an hour or so. It's much more. They are things we learn for a lifetime. Are you understanding me? But we're going to look at the ones we can be able to see today and um, what God has in stock for us within the minutes that we have. I want to begin by presenting to us some neglected facts of life some neglected facts of life, certain facts of life that we neglect as human beings. And these facts are not really hidden. They are very, very open. They're just that we just neglect them. And uh, I will state three of them before we go into, uh, as we get our hearts ready for what we want to say about the Bible. Number one, in case you are writing, you know, the church is a briefing ground where we receive instructions on how to live the kingdom life. And the mandate of Christ to us is for us to be disciples. A disciple is a student. So our services are discipleship classes or discipleship services. So be ready to write whatever we are going to say. As a student, you need a textbook. And the Bible is our textbook. Now, I've write, if you are writing, we are products of eternity materials living in time on a journey to return back to eternity where our real life will be lived. I repeat, we are products, we human beings, we are products of eternity materials living in time. We are products of eternity materials living in time. That is who we are. Have you gotten that? Now, the next one is on a journey to return back to eternity where our real life will be lived. On a journey to return back to eternity where our real life will be lived. Now, I want you to read to me what you have written. Yes. Yes. Can we read one more time? We are products of eternity materials living in time on a journey to return back to eternity where our real life will be lived. It means any life we are living now is not real. No matter how sweet it is to you, the real life will be lived after time. And it's the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's look at it there. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And um, look at what it says. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 5. Also, they are afraid of height, talking about the characteristics of certain, and of the terrors in the way. When the almond tree blossoms, the grasshopper is a burden and desire fails. For man goes to his eternal home. And the mourners go about the streets. So the mourners are not really carrying the man. They are carrying the dust the man lived in when he was on earth. Or the woman lived in when she was on earth. Do you, do you get my point? So, so, so that, that is why you cannot say you bury somebody. Nobody can bury anybody. You only bury the body. Do you understand me? So verse 6 now says, Remember your creator before the silver cord is loose. Or the bowl, the golden bowl is broken, or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the well. Verse 7, everyone read it. Then the dust will return to the earth as, as it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. Tell your neighbor, you are eternity product. I didn't hear you. You are a product of eternity materials. So the, the body is just the earth suit that we are living in. And that is a major fact of life. That we are uh, products of eternity materials. As this, we have seen in this scripture. We are living in time. We are on a journey. 
and, and the time is going to come that we're going to go back to the real life that we're created to live. Number two, the second fact of life I want us to write is this. There are two eternal destinations for all products of eternity. For all products of eternity materials. There are two eternal destinations for all products of eternity materials. And why I'm saying all products? Because you understand shortly there are two classes of eternity materials that God created. Sorry, products of eternity materials that God created. So there are two eternal destinations for all products of eternity materials in time. Can we say that? There are two eternal destinations, yes of all products of eternity materials in time. Can you say one more time? Can you add more life to that? There are two eternal destinations for all products of eternity materials in time. Does that make sense to you? Now, we, you can see that also in the book of Matthew chapter 25 where Jesus himself, the creator of heaven and earth, spoke about those two eternal destinations after he, actually he was speaking about what will happen at the end of the of the rapture sorry, the end of the seven year tribulation period the rapture will take place and there's going to be a seven year tribulation period and during that seven year the world will be under one government and that government will be led by the political antichrist we have structures on ground already that have laid foundation for the world, world, one world government. A whole lot of people are trying to, to the, the spirit of the Antichrist is, is organizing everything. And uh, just as the spirit of Christ was on earth before Jesus came physically, before he became flesh and dwelt among us, so the spirit of the Antichrist is now on earth and is, is, is preparing this structure where as the, after the rapture takes place, so there's going to be a world, one world government. Man would think that what happened, the rapture taking place, people living there, the problem of the earth. So they'll now begin to, because there'll be need of peace. So the spirit of the Antichrist will now produce the person of the Antichrist, who is going to rule as the world leader, as the leader of the entire planet. So during that period, they will not know that Bible prophecy have said they will only last for seven years. They will think that they will live forever and they will begin to do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, they, they will move against the nation of Israel, move against the Christians that will be left behind. And uh, during that period, the Bible calls it the period of Jacob's trouble. So it's a season where the nation of Israel is going to go to a lot. And during that period, there will be certain nations that will be sympathetic with the nation of Israel during the seven year period. And because some will be arrested, some will be locked up. And, and, and uh, a lot of torture will be going on. So, but, but there will be friendly nations that will defend those, uh, I mean, the nation of Israel during that period. So, Jesus now gave us what he will do when he comes back to the earth, what he will do to those friendly nations and what he will do to those nations that tormented the nation of Israel. And as you are going to understand certain things today, why that will happen. So, look at Matthew 25, verse 31. In what Jesus said, we're going to see the two eternal destinations. He said in verse 31, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, and he will sit on the throne of his glory, talking about the second coming of Christ, the visible appearance of Christ to the earth. The Bible says in verse 32, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. So this scripture, Bible prophecy call it the judgment of the nations. The judgment of the nations. So the judgment of the nations will take place at the end of the seven year tribulation period. That is when it will take place. There is, there is the final white, great white throne judgment who will take place after the 1000 millennium reign of Christ on earth. So that will take place. That is called the great white throne judgment. But this judgment we are reading is called the judgment of the nations. Do you understand me? So it's the judgment of the nations. This is not the final judgment. This is a prelude to the final judgment. So Jesus will come to determine who among the nations will join us in the 1000 millennium reign. Will join the church in the 1000 millennium reign. Will join the saved and sanctified people 
in the 1,000 millennium reign. So the Bible says he will sit as a shepherd and begin to separate between the sheep and the goat. So the nations that will be friendly to Israel have, during the one during the seven year tribulation period, they are called in this scripture the, the sheep nations. Why the nations that will be unfriendly, they are the goat nations. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. It's very important for us to understand these things. The sheep nations and the goat nations. So these are, this is just a description of the two kinds of animals and the, all of that stuff. God used the template of those two animals to really tell us the kind of nature that these people, uh, this kind of nations we have. So, so, so the Bible says in verse 34, then the king will say to those on his right hand, which means he would take the sheep nations and put at his right hand. Can you imagine how huge Jesus will be? Do you understand me? It's not going to be the small Jesus that was walking in the street in Jerusalem when he came. It's not going to be a Jesus you are giving high five today. It's going to be the, the governor among the nations. That is the day he will sit as the governor among the nations. Have you imagined the entire planet gathering to him? Where? At Jerusalem. Where the Bible called uh, the Mount Man Zion today, let me say the mountain of transfiguration, where the dome of the rock is right now, that is, that is where he will sit. So that tells you he will sit in a throne that will be huge than what we know. He's going to be bigger than what we think. So and power will generate out of him because the Bible says that day there will be no sun, there will be no moon. The sun will no longer give its brightness. In another word, the days are located to the sun to shine on earth will be over. And the days allocated to the moon to give his life will be over. So as soon as Jesus appeared, the Bible says even the stars will fall. So the, the sun will be told, thank you sun for serving the earth all this period. And the Bible says God will roll it away like a scroll. And Jesus will now be the son of the earth. So he will sit and give brightness and the entire nations will gather around him. He will now separate the nations that were friendly to Israel at his right hand side and separate the ones that were not friendly at his, to, to his left. Now, now, you cannot say, I will not go. Jesus will not say, hey, you this nation, get to my right, right hand. He said, no, we are not going. When he speak, his word move you. That is when they will know him as the king of kings and the lord of lords. You see, when God tell you, sit down in that realm, it's not dependent on your will. Is dependent on the power of his word. So that means once he says sit down, you may not want to sit. A force will carry your little bomb up, march on the ground. So in that day, there will be no rebellion. There will be no rebellion. So he will tell the good nations, move to my left. They can't say no, we are not. Once he says move to my left, power will move them to the left. Move to my right. Power will move to the right. Then he will now look at the God nation. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says you begin with the sheep nation. Sorry. It says in verse 34. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So this is the first eternal destination. One word we call it is heaven. A place of total comfort. Eternal comfort. Are you understanding me? But in this place, the version of the heaven that, that Jesus called the kingdom prepared for you is the 1,000 millennium reign where heaven will be on earth. Heaven will be on earth. So you will not separate them and get into your eternal destination. Are you understanding me? So we can see the first eternal destination. And look at the reason why he will allow them to come into the 1,000 million number. Look at verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer. That is the, the ship nation. Answer him. Say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? But do you know why they are asking him? Because he looked too magnificent, too glorious 
We didn't see you. We didn't see this glorious being. How, how did it happen? And look at what Jesus says. And the king once and said to them, Assuredly, I said to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. My brethren. That day, Jesus will be tribalistic. Right now, he's not. He's global. But that day will be tribalistic. His brethren are the Jews. Jesus came through the loins of Abraham. He came through the Jewish nation. So that day is going to say, in as much as you serve the Jews. Can you imagine? Today, you make heaven by serving Christ. That time, you will make heaven by serving the Jews. Where he came from. You see how merciful God is. There could be adulterers among them. Jesus would say, no, enter because you serve the Jews. You know why? He's a king of kings. He's a final arbiter of all, of all authority. He can't decide to do anything. And nobody can question him. He said, because you serve the Jews, I will cleanse you. Just enter. Are you understanding me? That is the first eternal destination. It's a glorious, peaceful destination that every human being should crave for. But this one, I just needed to read that for you to understand that for the good nation, for the sheep nation, they will have a foretaste of that destination. There are other scriptures that talk about heaven as the, that number one destination. Now, but look at the second destination. The Bible says in verse 44, then he also said to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire. Do you see the second destination? It's called everlasting fire. Prepared for who? Prepare for the devil and his angels. So the first destination is prepared for the righteous. The second destination is prepared for the devil, not people, the devil. But in this scripture, we can see that people now joined him. He began to ask why. You see, nobody who shared the nature of Satan will make heaven. None. Nobody who follow his ways will make heaven. It's impossible. You could be a pope, you could be anything. Nobody will share the nature. That is why when you come into Christ, he changed your nature. Do you know what the meaning of Christian? Christian is someone who carries the nature of Christ. That's the meaning. Are you, are you understanding me? So why are all these things important? Why do I need to open this thing? Because of the third fact of life I want to give us. The third fact of, fact of life is this. Write this down. It is the information you have absorbed in your spirit over time that will ultimately determine your eternal destination. It is the information you have absorbed in your spirit over time that will ultimately determine your eternal destination have you written that can we read that together okay you are still writing let me wait let me read it again it is the information you have absorbed into your spirit over time that will ultimately determine your eternal destination information is very powerful the information you have absorbed in your spirit over time is what will determine your eternal destination it's not even god it's not even satan information that's how the devil is supplying his own information because he want people to follow him jesus is also supplying his own because he want people to also follow him those who follow Jesus will end up in heaven. Those who follow the devil will end up in hell. All of them have different realms where they're living. Is someone hearing me? Why is information important? Information is important because in case you're writing, write this down. Information is the greatest determinant of decisions. Information is the greatest determinant of decisions. And it is our decisions that will determine our destination. Information is the greatest determinant of decisions. And it is our decisions that will determine our eternal destinations. 
Information is the greatest determinant of decisions. And our decisions will determine our eternal destinations. That is why when you want to change your decision, you need a revelation. You need fresh information to make fresh decisions. You could have decided to do good. If there is no information to back that decision, you will fail. Decisions are strengthened by information. Decisions are strengthened by information. That is why somebody who may decide to marry you as a woman, and the person is ready to marry you, he has, he's moving forward, or then he will not get an information and change his mind. Or a woman wants to marry a man, she's so happy, she's so excited, and she will not get an information. The same man she has said, I will marry you, I love you with my pancreas and everything, but she now get a fresh information. She can call him devil. Information and change her mind. So, me information is very, very powerful to decision making. So, that is why we have, you see, the devil, like I always say, do not say Satan is foolish. Anybody who is saying foolish, foolish Satan don't understand spiritual warfare. The Bible call him wiser than Daniel. That's what the Bible says. It said, Thou art wiser than Daniel. That's why if you don't bury yourself in Christ, Satan will bury you. He's so smart. Do you know what the devil is doing to people? He's not actually sending witches to their houses. He's sending information to their hearts. That's all he's doing. Without your smartphone. In fact, that is the greatest witchcraft you have now. It's not the one in your village. Your smartphone. He sends all kinds of information to you through it. And that shapes your decision. And every day you make decisions that will lead you to eternal damnation. Without even knowing. So while you are there binding witches and wizards, the guy is just smiling, taking a bottle of coke because he has given you information that you are following him to where he's going to. That is why the greatest business of God on earth is the preaching of the gospel. It's the project. Let me use the word project of God, not business. The great, okay, well, it depends on what you call business. It's not a money-making thing I'm talking about here. The greatest project on earth of God on earth is the preaching of the gospel. That is why as soon as you get saved, you are enlisted. You are enlisted to use your mouth and say something about Jesus. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because the enemy have his own soldier who are also using their mouth to say things about himself. Permeating the hearts of men. So, so that is why you must understand your eternal destination is not decided by God or by Satan, it decided by what the two of them supply to you. So decided by you. You now choose which one you want to collect. So somebody will not go to hell and say, God has thrown me in hell. God does not throw people in hell. It's people decisions that throw them in hell. Somebody will not also go to heaven and say, well, I made it. No, God gave you information that allow you to make the decision that took you to heaven. So decisions are the determinant of destiny. Decisions in life. That is why information is powerful. Now having understood, understood that or having said that, we should now come into the, pop, I mean the Bible, our eternal companion. If information is key to our eternal destiny, then the greatest asset to that information is the Bible. The greatest asset or access to that information is the Bible. The Bible was placed on earth to function as a basic instruction from God to man before we leave the earth. That's why it's called Bible. The basic instruction from God to man before we leave the earth. So it is full of information that if we absorb in our spirit, we shall be saved. If we absorb in our spirit, we will make proper decisions. Because in the book of Acts chapter 16, you know, there was a story. Paul and Silas were in the prison. And the Bible says God intervened and there was an earthquake. And the prison, and the prison world that thought they have escaped. And he wanted to kill himself. And Paul said, no, 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 don't kill yourself. We are here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He said, I think about that. I, I, I saw. You see, it's good to, to have Christ in you. If it is today. Earthquake happened in prison. They wanted to kill you tomorrow. Won't you run away? <laughs> the guy didn't run. You know why? Because when you have the ancients of days by your side, you see beyond the present. 
And it's a vision you see in the future that determines how you operate in the present. Are you understanding me? So he knew that what was coming after the darkness is a bright light. Someone is going to be saved. So he sat down there. And the guy, the guy now came to him and said, Sars, what must I do to be saved? Now, each time I look at that, I ask myself, nobody preached to him. Power preached to him. The power of God broke forth. He got convicted. What must I do to be saved? Saved from what? Saved from hell. And that is the question that every human being must ask on earth because we are eternity materials. We are moving. We are on a journey. One day our days will expire on earth. We will get back to eternity to answer for how we live in time. So if you don't make the proper decisions in time, hell will be your home. And this man is not asking by the decisions I've been making. I know if I die now, I'm not going to make heaven. So what must I do to be saved from hell? Not to be saved from poverty. Not to be saved from marital crisis. That is what people are looking for. Your earthly problems will end once you close your eyes in death, my friend. Look for the things that still matters in eternity. How will God see you? That is more important. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? So, so, so that is why information... Is, and what did they say? He said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. You and your house. What kind of believing that? Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth. It's not talking about a, a re repetition of sinner's prayer. James came up to now and said, that kind of belief must produce a character of Christ in you. Must, you must renounce the, a, a way of life of carnality and all of that stuff. But these things are impossible if the Bible remains closed. Are you understanding me? So I want to now give you two neglected facts about the Bible. There are so many, but because of time, we just look at two. Number, the, we'll look at uh, two neglected facts. Write this down if you are writing. The Bible... Sorry for the grammars we are using this morning. <laughs> the Bible is the infallible word of God. The Bible is the infallible word of God. And you understand why I say it's been neglected? Infallible is I-N-F-A-L-L-I-B-L-E. I-N-F-A-L-L-I-B-L-E. You can see in the board in case my writing are clear. It said the Bible, I said the Bible is the infallible word of God. And occupies the second level of authority in God's kingdom. The Bible is the infallible word of God. It occupies the second level of authority in God's kingdom. And please take this thing very serious. It occupies the second level of authority in God's kingdom. That's what the Bible is. And now... The word Bible, let me explain quickly before I explain the statement I gave you to write. The word Bible is actually from a Greek word. Latin word, green word, I think, I think Hebrew. No, Hebrew does not have us. Greek and Latin. Because the Bible as a whole was assembled 400 years after the resurrection of Jesus. Before then, things were in pieces. It was 400 years after the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that the Bible was now assembled. Now, I don't want to go into history because the time is too short. So, there was a man who assembled the entire Bible. I think it was, he used the Latin. So, the, the season he assembled the entire Bible. So, the word Latin was used to describe, a word in Latin was used to des describe the Bible. And for English, it simply means the books or book or scrolls. Or parchment. So meet books. Say the books. Book. Scroll. Parchment. That's the meaning of Bible. The word Bible. Are you understanding me? So repeat again. Say book. The books. Scroll. Or parchment. So, so why the books? Because it's a gathering of 66 books. And it's divided into two, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not just divided because they, are, they want to uh, create segments in the Bible. It was divided because of the covenant and because of the dispensation. That means there were books that were written before Jesus died on the cross. And there were books that were written after he has died. That's why we have the New Testament and the Old Testament. And the central, the central truth of the Bible is no God for yourself. 
That's what I love about the Bible. So, I mean, the central truth of the Bible. Okay, preach that to your neighbor because it seems to me, some of you, tell your neighbor the central truth. Okay, wait, tell your neighbor, show me your Bible. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, show, show you. Now, show, just show it. Are, are you showing it? Hold it and show it to your neighbor. Uh -huh. Now, tell your neighbor that the central truth of that book you are holding in your hand is no God for yourself. So if you don't know him for yourself, you have failed. The book is useless. Is someone hearing me? Knowing God, Old Testament emphasis. Know God, New Testament emphasis. Know God, that is a central truth of the Bible. Are you understanding me? It's not for game. It's not for charismatic display. It's not a sign that you're a Christian. You could carry a Bible while you're not part of the Bible. Listen. The Bible was written by the Holy Ghost using the ink of the life and times of men. Are you what I'm saying? Written by the Holy Spirit using the ink. What is the ink of the Bible? The life and times of people. J David, people like Enoch, people like Adam. Genesis, you see Adam, he was an ink in God's hands. All those stories, Ruth, Naomi, all of them, they are ink. So when you are reading their, their story, you are assessing the ink of the Bible. And you soon understand what to connect when you read it. Are you understand what I'm saying here? So now, so the Bible, what did I give you to write? I said the Bible is what? The infallible word of God and occupies what? The second level of authority in God's kingdom. What is the meaning of the word infallible? Infallible means that which is incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. So when somebody now comes to tell you there are mistakes in the Bible, having to help preachers saying so, you know, the Bible have errors. That is why I fear. I begin to ask myself, what kind of spirit is living in such a preacher? Because you are daring God. Because the Bible is infallible. It is incapable of making mistakes. <laughs> are you understanding me? Or be wrong. That is what the Bible is. So when you see mistakes in the Bible, it means your heart is wrong. It is your heart that is wrong. You see, I am putting on eyeglasses and I'm seeing you through the glasses. I'm not seeing you through my, my retina in, the, in my eye like that. I'm seeing you through the glasses that my retina is functioning through. So whatever I am seeing is my glasses that are telling me. My glasses are showing you to me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's say the glasses are dark. I can enter this place with all the light and it has happened to me as a little child. You know, during Christmas then in Calabar, Cross River State, I, we, our father will buy eyeglasses. So we'll begin, you know, the children's glasses, we'll begin to choose which color. You choose black, choose whatever. So because of the excitement of the Christmas, you, you eat and sleep with your glasses on. Hallelujah. It's beautiful to be a child. I can't forget those days. And, and you sleep with your glasses on. So you woke up in the morning, you forget that you are wearing glasses. And it is morning and the glasses are dark to you. It is still night. And you turn and go back to sleep. So your glasses have told you that it's not yet day. But in reality, it is day. So you can argue and fight with anybody. It's not yet day. Night, we are seeing the night, and somebody said, What is wrong with you? Look at the sun. The sun is not bright enough. Let me go back. We are still yes, listen. That is what it is when you say there are mistakes in the Bible. There is something in your heart that you are reading into the Bible. That is why you are saying there is mistakes there. Because the Bible is the infallible word of God and occupies the second level of authority in God's kingdom. There are seven levels of authority. Listen. Three are sovereign. Four are delegated. When an authority is sovereign, it is unquestionable. And the three sovereign authority is the authority of God the Father 
authority of the word of God. And the third level is authority of the spirit of God. So authority of God as a father is big. You cannot question it. Authority of the word of God cannot be questioned. And the authority of the spirit of God cannot be questioned. But you can question the full delegated authority. Which is the church, the government, your employer, you can question him. The family, you can question your father, what's the meaning of this? Do you understand my point? You can tell your father, dad, what's the meaning of this? You say, I should wear my shoe this way. Why? But when God says, wear your shoe that way, you don't question. He will pray from the realm of sovereign. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Are you still here? You pray in the realm of sovereign. So that is the realm where the Bible is. It is infallible. It is beyond mystic. It, is, it cannot be wrong. It cannot be wrong. Now let me give you a further meaning. When, the Bible, when we say the Bible is infallible, it is, write this down, it is completely trustworthy. It means the Bible is completely trustworthy as a guide to salvation. Is completely trustworthy as a guide to salvation and a life that will lead man to heaven and will never fail to accomplish that purpose. Number one, I say it is completely trustworthy as a guide to salvation and a life that will lead man to heaven. Number two, I say it is it will never fail to accomplish its purpose. It will never fail to accomplish its purpose. That is how infallible the word of God is. And you see it in the book of Matthew. Let's run to certain scriptures quickly. About three or four. Matthew chapter five. Let's begin with that. Matthew chapter five. Verse 17. Look at what Jesus himself said. Matthew chapter five verse 17. Jesus said, do not think that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. Or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill verse 18 for as shortly i said to you till heaven and earth pass away one jot or one title will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled though this was referring to the the first books of the bible they call the law of moses and and it has a template for whatever proceed from God that was allowed by the spirit of God to be assembled in this book. Are you understanding what I'm saying there? It is infallible. You don't question it. You submit to it. Because God placed the Bible beyond human logic. Beyond human logic. Beyond human judgment. Beyond human question. That is why when you question the Bible, it's a sign that your heart is not right. When your heart becomes right you don't question the bible are you understanding what i'm saying here so when somebody now says the bible is not correct that person's heart is not correct the person's heart is not correct because the bible is infallible look at what jesus said in john chapter 10 john chapter 10 quickly look at what jesus says in john chapter 10 he said no a book that contains things that God himself have decreed, none of this will fail. Huh? And you are questioning it. You are questioning the sovereign authority of the world. John chapter 10, verse 35. Look at what the Bible says. It says, if he called them gods to whom the world, the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. So we mean the scripture cannot be broken. You know what? It is infallible. It is beyond error, beyond mistakes. It cannot be broken. I want to submit to you that when you get to heaven, God will judge us by this book. So look at what God did. He sent the book he will use to judge us in heaven to us on earth before we leave the earth. You see how merciful he is. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? Look at what the Bible says. Now, the issue is this. If the Bible is infallible, if the Bible have no mistakes, why are people seeing error in it? 
I have said because the hearts are wrong. Now, what is it that is making the heart wrong? Second Corinthians chapter 4, another scripture I want us to read, but just write it because of time. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says, the God of this world has blinded the minds of people. You see the way Satan fight. Before he takes away your money, he will first, you see, sometimes Satan does not even fight by taking away your money. His greatest warfare is to blind the mind because he knows that information matters. Blinding the mind, let me tell you, I've used eyeglasses to explain. Also, let me use, uh, um, uh, you know, what they use in sealing the windows of, 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 of cars. We call it tinted glasses. So if you have a car that is tinted and you are inside, you see the world through the tint on the car. So what the devil did, he didn't take away your mind. He just put a tint on it. <laughs> he just put a tint just on the minds of every human being on it. So that you begin to see God through it. See the Bible through it. So when you see the Bible through his tint, you say, it's a useless book. Some people, some even, funny enough, professors, they have said it's an ancient document containing the history of some people. Some have said, well, those who say Jesus died on the cross, he died as a criminal for his own sins. All kinds of statements because of the tint in their heart. They will tell you, tell me who wrote the Bible. Tell me what is the origin of the Bible. If I has been distorted, the original one is not what you are having. Uh-uh. You are seeing the word of God through the tint. The tint called the God of this have blinded the minds of people. That's why when you get to Jesus, before he gives you a Bible to read, he will remove the tint from your heart. It is called circumcision of the heart. He have to remove the taint so that you can understand his word. That is why one of the apostolic uh, um, assignment is to open the eyes of the people. What does it mean to open the eyes? Remove the taint. Just take away the blindness. Take away the taint from the people. Once it is taken away, they begin to see as God intends them to see. Is someone understand what I'm saying here? So, you also understand it's not just the tint from the God of this hate that have blinded the mind of people. There's another tint of religion. That one is the spirit of the Antichrist in religion. It puts a tint in people's heart. So that though you have escaped the one from the gods of this age, there's another one he will put on you. That is why being prayerful without studying the Bible will lead you to error. Prayer does not remove the tint. It's scriptural application or scriptural revelation that removes the tint. It's encounter with the word that removes the tint. Do you understand what I'm saying? The disciples of Jesus worked with him for three and a half years. They still have the tint of religion in their heart. They were not understanding the scriptures. And look at what the Bible says happened in Luke chapter 24. Quickly, open your Bibles to Luke 24. The Bible says in Luke chapter 24, Jesus <laughs> met two of those disciples on the road to Emmaus and, and he was talking to them. While he was talking to them, the fire of the world was burning in their heart. What was he consuming? The tint of religion. The fire was burning while he was talking. And, and finally, he, look, at, look at what the Bible says in a verse, let me just pick one we read. Verse Luke 24, verse, um, okay, maybe verse 25. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ have suffered these things and to enter his glory and beginning, beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. We will come to that shortly. Look at the next thing. Then they drew near to the village where they were going and indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went to stay with them. Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them and he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were what? 
open and they knew him and he vanished from their side and they said to one another do you know that our heart born within us trying to remove the tilt why he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us what's it mean why did the bible use the word open the word open is not just opening the bible it's losing the i mean opening the understanding of people so that the tilt will be removed are you understanding me it's so sad that so many of us in the church today we carry the tilt of religion that's why we drink oil that's why we use water that is why we use all these garbages that they give in church salt clothes whatever for prayer because there's a tilt of religion and whenever you serve jesus with a tilt of religion in your heart you end up serving the antichrist you can't serve the true christ with a tilt in your heart because you will never know him are you understanding what i'm talking about here so the one of the major thing god is removing is taking away the blindness from the god of this age and the blindness of religion from people so that they can gain access to the bible it is when the tilt of religion is in your heart that you could not say the bible is not correct or the tilt of the god of this world you will not say it is not correct now having understood this first fact about the bible let me show you the second fact about the bible and we're going to spend time on this one as we wrap it up i want to show you some of the things that the bible says about itself this is the only book that explains itself to us it tells us its origin it tells us a lot of facts about itself truth about itself but because we don't study so we don't find out those things and i'm and sometimes you even study you still cannot find out because if you study the bible with the tilt in your heart you, you will still cannot find out are you understanding what i'm saying i have met somebody who teaches who was teaching both the islamic religion and the christian religion in the class and yet the person is not born again so you can teach it you can read it you can talk about it but you will not meet the author because the tilt prevents you from getting what is in it are you understanding me the tilt will just prevent you from knowing the lord so satan may not take the bible from your hand but he will take he will put the tilt in your heart he will make sure that you have all the translations but you have a, also a tilt in your heart so that if you open it you don't have a book you are reading like a textbook are you understanding what i'm saying that's why one of the major moves of the holy ghost you should take away the tilt circumstance our heart and remove all the stuff so now what did the bible say about itself the bible says so much about itself but i want to talk about just three things that the bible says about itself number one the bible told us how it came into the world and i will show you the bible told us how it came how it came into the world remember this is the information we need to make proper decisions that will lead to our eternal the right eternal destination do you understand me so so he told us how it came how did the bible come into the world god decided right from genesis chapter 3 verse 14 when he declared and 15 that the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent god began to carve a path for the bible to come on it that's what the bible told us how it came on it and he began to carve a path he moved from from he wanted to pass through the doors of Eber, because Eber seems to be drawing closer to him than cain and god now requested the two of them to bring sacrifice to him and, and, and when they came they brought sacrifice not because god was hungry they brought sacrifice not because they wanted to be free from demons they came in because they were marking the passover you get my point they were depicting jesus that was going to come as a sacrificial lamb to die for our sins so when they, they were asked to bring the sacrifice cain could not connect abel connected and he brought in what depicted christ and god now honored his sacrifice and dishonored that of cain and what happened finally cain killed abel and eliminate that program of God God began to wait again until he found another person set 
Are you understanding me? And said, Give back to his son. And thou, in his days, people began to call upon the name of the Lord. And the Lord began to carve a path. Because the generation of Cain became so wicked, they left the presence of God and produced a race of darkness on it. Are you understanding me? And God began to carve a path through this new lineage called Seth. And as they moved, finally, he got to Noah. In the days of Noah, the earth became so wicked. And God said, I, my spirit cannot strive with man. And before we know it, God refurbished the earth for the first time. He cleans things up with the flood. And when he cleans the things with the flood, he now said, never again will I use the flood to clean up the earth. And Paul will later, sorry, Peter will later tell us, God will now use fire to clean the earth. Are you understanding me? So as time went on, he found an Abraham. And he, he caught a covenant with him. And he looked at him and said, I will use this one as a template on it. I will give him a child when he will get to hundredfold. And I explained to you, was it last week, why it had to be that? Now, as he kept moving with Abraham, and Isaac was born. From Isaac, Jacob and Esau were born. And when, while they were still in the mother's womb, God was checking, who among these two I am going to use to bring forth my book on earth? And while he was checking, he, he like fast forwarded their lives and now saw that Esau was going to value food more than, bright, more than spiritual things. He was going to value food more than his birthright. And God now looked at Esau and said, oh, Based on what I have seen, Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. Because he, he, he fast forwarded their lives. He now saw the characteristics of Jacob. I said, okay, this one is going to have an encounter with me. This one, the mother will teach him how to be a supplanter. But I will meet him because his desire is to be in my presence. I will meet him to change him. It doesn't matter how your character is. If you desire God's presence, you cannot remain the same. Are you understanding me? Because God's presence is what changed our nature. So that was what God saw about Jacob. Not that Jacob was more excellent. He just knew this one. It's going to be a man of the presence. Are you understanding me? A man of the presence. And he said, Is Jacob I love? He saw I hated. He now picked Jacob and said, Out of his loins, I'm going to produce the 12 tribes. And when the devil saw that God had determined to use his seed, his loins, to produce the 12 tribes in order to bring his book on earth, problem now came up. He wanted to marry the person he wanted to marry. And the father now said, No. And the father played him game. Two women were given to one man. And the bride price was 14 years of labor. What a bride price. <sighs> At the end of the day, his marital life was scattered. Jacob ended up producing 12 sons from four women. It wasn't his plan. In life, sometimes you wake up in life and you are going in the direction that you know this is right for you. And things began to hit you. People begin to do things and they begin to, to, to do things that are beyond you. But Jacob was manipulated by a man he's trusted. Are you understanding me? Just like many youth have been manipulated today by the elders we all trust. He was manipulated and his marital life was shattered and everything was shattered. And, and he, he had this woman that was dragging him, sleep with me. He had the other one dragging him. He had their house helps all attached. And the man, he lost so much strength in life that he couldn't name any baby. The women were naming them. Naphtali, God. And they were naming them out of problems. God. My husband would now begin to love me. Naphtali, uh, a troop, and, and all kinds of stuff. Jacob said, mm. I can imagine wake up in the morning and carry one tree stick. Do you know village men? How they carry, I don't know how they use tree stick in Kenya. In my place, the man gets, Jacob wake up in, he's tired of life. He just carry one long tree stick. I begin to brush his teeth early in the morning. Brushing his teeth early in the morning around 4 a.m. It's because of problems. And Jacob, so, so at the end of the day, the 12, the what God saw, it doesn't matter how you try to manipulate the life of a holy seed carrier, a life of someone I have chosen to do things on earth. There could be human manipulation, there could be demonic manipulation, but my cancer shall stop. I don't care what the devil is doing with your life. I don't care how much he has distorted God's plan for your life. I don't care how much you are not happy with life. Maybe you are sad. You feel you made this mistake or that mistake. I am saying this.
this morning to tell you that the plan of God for your life is still intact. I said the plan of God for your life is still intact. The purpose of God for your life will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. You know why? When God have make a plan for your life, when he put his seed in you, he anchor his prosperity on his faithfulness, not your faithfulness. Though you are required to be faithful, but he anchored the prosperity on his faithfulness. He anchors the success of the plan on his faithfulness. Because if you should go by the rules, Jacob was not fit. How can you have four women under you? And the children all came through those women. But God said, no, I have a plan. I have a plan. My faithfulness, I will give him. Are you understanding me? God may not give you money, but let him give you faithfulness. That is all you need. Are you understanding? me because if he gives you his faithfulness his throne backs you wherever you go his throne backs you his presence backs you there is no mistake you will ever make that will cancel his plan for your life his faithfulness will overrule what the devil is trying to establish his faithfulness will keep you going where your strength cannot go when your strength fail God's faithfulness will speak where you cannot pray his faithfulness will speak where you cannot fast his faithfulness will speak where you cannot even go to church you are just tired and weary God's faithfulness will speak for you because he knows your strength the Bible says as a father pities his children so the Lord pity those who fear him he knows your, your limitation so he attaches plans for your life to his faithfulness even as time he say here that is why you may fail but his plan for your life does not fail clean yourself up and get up and begin to find out lord what is your plan for my life i may have failed in marriage i may have failed financially i may have failed in this aspect but there's something about me that has not failed it is called your plan for my life open my eyes let me see it are you understanding me so do not resign to faith do not say it is over it cannot be over or it is until god says so until the plan of god for your life is fulfilled it doesn't matter the demon around your life. It doesn't matter the dragons around your destiny. The plan of God for your life is anchored on God's faithfulness. And the, and the throne of God is backing you, fighting every inch of the battle to make, for, to make sure that whatever God has determined come to pass. There are declarations in, the, in heaven that say, my cancer shall start. It shall start. That's what you can read from the life of Joseph. So, I mean, Jacob, I told you, the Bible was written with the ink of men. The life and times of men, they are the ink. That's how when you read into their lives, you hear the voice of God. Are you understanding me? You hear the voice of God. So, so Jacob now came up. At the end of the day, Israel was born. And look at what Paul said, Romans chapter 3. What the Bible says about itself. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. He said, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what is the profit of circumcision? Are you in the book of Romans? Chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then is a Jew? That means what is the benefit that they brought Christ to the earth? Are you understanding me? They have been, that is the only nation under, under heaven that have gone through intense persecution. All kind, there, is, there have been a lot of empires that have risen on it, but there are seven major empires in history, and each of those empires dealt with the Jews. The last one is going to happen at, at, after the rapture. Each of those empires, why, do, why is it that that nation is, you know, is always facing that battle? It's because through them, Jesus came. And through them, we got the Bible. Look at what the Bible says. It says, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what is the profit of circumcision? Verse 2. Much in every way. Chiefly because to them we are committed the oracles of God. Do you know the real oracle? It's not that prophet or prophetess. Carry your Bible. Carry your Bible like this. Say this is the oracle of God. Say again this is the oracle of God. It's not a prophet. It's not a prophetess. They are all liars. This is the real oracle. Give God a mighty shout of praise. The Bible said to them. Was so the Bible have told us how he came. How it came. He said I came through the Jews. 
God committed me to them. Are you understanding me? Somebody was asking one day, I said, what will happen to the Israelites? Will all of them make heaven? In the days to come, I will teach that. You, God cannot use you and dump you. Hey, my poor yeah. He cannot use you and dump you. When God uses you, he rescues you. He refreshes you. And he takes you to heaven. Are you understanding me? He cannot use you and dump you. He's not a man. He used them to bring Jesus. He used them to bring the Bible. The oracles. And look at it. I wish I have time to tell you that he gave them the book and asked them to keep it to show us how to keep it. But when they failed, he's now moved to the Gentiles. Are you understanding me? He now moved to the Gentiles. So right now, we are now showing them how to keep their book. How to keep the book that they got from God. How to live according to it. Because it is through them. So the Bible told us how it came. So how did the Bible come? The Bible came through the life and times of the Jews. It came by the hand of the Jews. I've, I've given you a brief history how it started from the Garden of Eden and ended up with Abraham. I ended up with Jacob, with the 12 tribes. And now we have the nation of Israel and we have the book. So if you read the Bible without the tint of the God of this age or religion in your heart, you will not call it a book of the Jews. No. It's a, a letter of God to mankind. The messenger is called Israel. Are you understanding me? It's a messenger of God to who? It's, sorry, it's a letter of God to who? To mankind. Who are the messengers? The nation of Israel. So, if somebody brings a letter to you, maybe from UP, uh, uh, UPS or DHL, they bring a letter to you, will you call that letter, it belongs to DHL? Talk to me. It belongs to you. So you don't call the messenger the owner of the book. It came by their hands. And it came to us. Is somebody hearing me? So the second thing the Bible says about itself is how it benefits the human race. The Bible showed us how it benefits the human race. Write this down. The Bible is a written voice of God. The Bible is a written voice of God sent to connect our hearts to the ultimate voice of the Lord himself, Jesus Christ. The Bible is a written voice of God sent to connect our hearts to the ultimate voice of God, which is Jesus Christ. Do you understand me? The Bible is a written voice of God sent to connect our hearts to the ultimate voice of God. Jesus Christ. Sent to connect our hearts to the ultimate voice of God, Jesus Christ. So if that Bible has not connected you to Christ, it's a waste. Are you understanding me? It's a waste. So me, the Bible is the written voice of God sent to connect my heart to the ultimate voice of God which is Jesus Christ the Bible says that in time past God spoke by the prophet but in the end he has sent us his son Hebrew chapter 1 Jesus is the ultimate voice of God so the Bible contains the ink of God which is the life and times of men that when we read without the tint of the God of this world or the tint of religion in our heart we are going to stumble into the real voice Jesus Christ. The Bible call him what? The word of God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So this word connects you to that word. Are you understanding me? So that is how it benefits the human race. Are you understanding me? That's why the Bible benefits the human race. I wish, I wish there is time for me to go into the book of Job. And show you a chapter in the book of Job. That depicts the world. The Bible and Christ. But there's no time for that. Number three. The third fact I want to share with you about the Bible is this. <laughs> it shows us the person that have authority to interpret it. <laughs> not everybody. In fact, you will, you will soon find out. But before we get there. If the Bible is not interpreted to you. You will never gain a 
access to the ultimate voice of God it was sent to connect you to. Are you, are you understanding me? Do not neglect the necessity of having the Bible interpreted to you. Don't neglect it. Yes, we are to study our Bibles, but it becomes only profitable when it has been interpreted. That is why God sent, the Bible says he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some apostles and teachers for the perfecting of sin. He raised leaders in his body to do one major assignment before they collect your tithe and offering and begin to collect all your money, they are to interpret the word to you. Not even interpret your dream. No. Dream interpretation is not a commission from God. Bible interpretation is the commission from God. God did not commit any prophet to interpret your dream for so long as the dispensation of grace is concerned, the only commission from heaven is Bible interpretation. Job 33 says, if there is an interpreter of divine will in their lives, then they will be delivered from the gates of death. Are you understanding me? So, so we are not commissioned for dream interpret. In fact, it is a useless Christian that look for who to interpret their dream. You could be angry with me, I don't care. Let me close my eyes so that I will not see your face. <laughs> if you cannot understand your dream, you are still very far. Close the distance between you and God and the letters will become clear. A dream is a mail sent to you by God. That is why Job, Jeremiah 23 made it clear that God did not ordain people to go and start interpreting people's dream. But it's very clear, scriptural interpretation is the commission of the fivefold ministry gift. Scriptural interpretation. Do you know why? Because what is Titus chapter 2 say? He said, for the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Doing what? Teaching. So if there's no teaching, there's no revelation. You cannot assess. The Bible will never be profitable to you if you are not taught the Bible. You must be taught the content of the Bible, not the content of your problems. The content of the Bible, not the kinds of demons that are troubling you. The content of this book, they that know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. It is people that are taught the Bible that will teach the devil a lesson. If you understand me, say I hear. I repeat, it is people who are taught the Bible that will teach the devil a lesson. Those who are not taught the Bible, Satan will teach them lessons. So in life, there are two Christians. Christians that are teaching Satan lessons and Christians that are learning lessons from the devil. <laughs> you get married, you rejoice. After the wedding, he slap you. Pa! And the marriage becomes sick for the rest of your life because you don't read the Bible. If you read the Bible, he will give warning to his demons. Don't go near their house. They know. Satan does not time, does not come near who know. Do you know where he learned the lesson? He learned it from Jesus. How can you meet the word of God and you want to challenge the word of God? So he met Jesus. If you are the son of man, turn this stone to become bread. Man shall not be alone. He knew. So he knew. And Jesus, and Satan began to quote scripture upside down. Jesus also knew. Listen carefully. When you know, when you know, I say when you know, they that know shall be strong and carry out great exploit. When you know, Satan is scared of those who know. He's scared of those who walk by revelation. He's scared by, by those who carry the revelation of this word in their spirit. So he will keep you to do anything. Sing, fast, pray, but don't read the Bible. Don't study it. You could read it, but don't study it. Because the difference between reading and studying. Are you understanding me? So, look at the last few minutes we have. And listen carefully. If the Bible is not interpreted to you, you will become a liability in God's kingdom. You'll be relying on people to survive. If the Bible is not interpreted, Satan will not want the Bible interpreted to people. 
At most, he will give liberty for misinterpretation. Because he knows misinterpretation of the Bible will still not produce anything in people's life. In fact, it will only wreck their lives. You want to serve your God. Can you imagine? If somebody, one of the major funny things that I've heard was somebody that came to me and he was, he opened to Isaiah chapter 4 and he said, seven women will lay hold on one man. The Bible says seven women will lay hold on one man. And say, so we live in a dispensation where one man is to marry seven women. It is called misinterpretation of the scriptures. And I told the guy, sit down. Listen carefully. Nobody on earth has authority to interpret the Bible. The Bible did not give anybody authority to interpret it. The Bible interprets itself. So I took the man to the scripture that interpreted Isaiah chapter 4. We studied to find how the Bible interpreted itself. Are you understanding me? Why do we study? It's just to find out how the Bible interpreted itself. You know why God did not give the authority to man? Because it's a sovereign authority, not delegated. It's sovereign. It is not delegated. So nobody has authority to interpret the Bible because it has already interpreted itself. Our job is to study it and find out the interpretation it gave to itself. So I took the person to the book of Revelation that interpreted Isaiah chapter 4 and I said the seven women are seven churches. The man there is Jesus. And I said the God was exposing the hallowed church made of a group of Christians who will not be interested in the character of Christ. They will not be interested, interested in sound doctrine. All they want is miracles. Don't we have them today? We have. It is called the hallowed church. And the person was delivered for sexual perversion because he said he had only two wives. He's looking for number four, five, six, and because they have to be seven. He said, you know, there, you, know, you know, there are so many women today. We have to help God reduce the number. Yeah, yeah. So me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you understanding me? When the Bible is misinterpreted, it wrecks the lives of people. It wrecks the life. Look at how the church has become a money-making machine today because the Bible has mis been misinterpreted. The church has become either a political, in some areas, the church is a political party because the Bible has been misinterpreted. In some areas, the church is a metaphysical cult because the Bible has been misinterpreted. Every demonic program going on in church today, they are using scriptures to do it. Scriptures misinterpreted. To ruin the program of God. So God knew that we human beings are wicked. So he did not give interpretation to man. He gave it to his word. Our job is to study and find out what interprets what. Scripture interprets scripture. The Bible says precept upon precept. It says comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. So scripture interprets scripture. Are you understanding me? It is when you study that you can find the scripture that interpreted the scripture. But let me show you one thing. In God's plan, he raised leaders. The fivefold ministry gave. First Corinthians chapter 20 or so said the first group are apostles. He said, and he placed in church first apostles. I want to submit to you that in the plan of Christ, apostolic mantles are the one to bring what the Bible has interpreted itself. The study, God give them the grace to assess what the Bible has says about itself and bring it to the church. That was what Paul did to us. If there was no Paul, we would not know much about, the, about our faith. Is somebody hearing me? Listen carefully. Paul stood in what uh, Moses and the rest of the prophets were, were, uh, wrote and collected what we have today. Maintaining the same sovereign authority. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Now, here is the process. Because the devil knows it is interpretation that leads to manifestation. If there is proper interpretation, there will be amazing manifestations of God's grace upon our lives. But if there is improper manifestation, there will be, sorry, if there is improper 
interpretation. There will be demonic manifestations. So it, if you want to see God moving, forming Christ in people, interpret the Bible accurately. How do you interpret the Bible accurately? By meeting the Bible to show us, to show you how it interpreted itself. So when you find out how the Bible interpreted itself, then you can rightly just deliver what it has said. And God will use it to form Christ in people. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So but what the devil is doing, he has made it impossible for people to gain access into what the Bible has says about itself. What a scripture says about a scripture. And let me tell you what he has done. There is a pollution of the heart with a, the spirit of mammon among us pastors. Because God ordained spiritual leaders, especially apostolic authorities, to bring interpretation of his word to his church. Say with me, bring. I didn't hear you. I didn't say for them to interpret. They are to bring it. It's already interpreted. Their job is to bring what had been that's why they are called messengers able ministers of the new testament so god gave apostles grace to assess what the bible has said they bring it and teach to the church that's why you see prophets evangelists pastors and teachers who have sat under apostles they are balanced apollos was an evangelist Mighty in scripture, but limited. Until he met a couple who have sat under Paul and they carry what I call an apostolic mantle that should rest on husband and wife. And they met Apollos and upgraded him. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? A lot needs upgrade. And look at what the devil is doing. He is making sure that the hearts of spiritual leaders is polluted with the love of money because once your heart is polluted with the love of money, you read it into the Bible. You read it into the Bible. When you read it into scriptures, it brings a ruin to the life of the hearers. Finally, go to the book of Psalm chapter 1. There's so much, but no time for that. Psalm chapter 1. What do I do with the Bible <laughs> as a human being? What do I do with the Bible? I should sit under leaders with grace to bring the interpretation to me. That's number one. If I have not sat under leaders with the grace to bring the interpretation to me, I cannot find out things in the Bible by myself. You see it in the life of the centurion he was going to jerusalem every now and then you remember the sorry the ethiopian eunuch going to jerusalem every now and then and yet he never understood Isaiah until one day an evangelist who have sat under apostles in the name philip came and opened the seal are you understanding what i'm saying listen carefully you sit under leaders with grace to open the seal if there was time i would have shown you how god gives authority to unseal the word to leaders and what the kind of encounters they will have with Jesus so that they can have the keys to unseal not everybody in God's plan they are hierarchies just as in the Jewish system we have the rabbis and we have rabbis the rabbis are the one to collect what God has interpreted and bring to the rest are you understanding me and may God raise us such people in our generation because the accuracy of the scripture has been lost in our age. God needs to raise us those men like Paul again. Let them bring these things. Let them carry the grace to assess what has been interpreted and bring it to us. So the Bible will become a piece of cake to us. May that happen to us in the name of Jesus. Finally, John, Psalm chapter 1, he said, Blessed is the man who walked on in the counsel of the ungodly. Not stand in the path of sinners. Not sit in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is where? In the law of the Lord. In his law he meditates day and night what do you do with the bible meditate on it day and night rise on your feet meditate on it day and night sit under leaders rise on your feet as we are closing rise on your feet as you are writing because we are true sit under leaders that will help you understand the bible 
Stand on that understanding and develop a character of meditating on it day and night. I declare over your life today that may the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and add no sorrow that the Bible was sent to deliver to you, may it be assessed by you. That from this day, as you open the word, the word will open to you. There will be understanding in the name of Jesus. The Bible will begin to manifest in your life as an eternal companion. Your test for the word will increase in the name of Jesus. Any kind of confusion that may have sat over your life, I command, let it be removed. Let revelation come in the name of Jesus. Let revelation come in the name of Jesus. Let revelation come in the name of Jesus. Every manipulation around your life against your relationship with the Bible, today I bring it down. Today I bring it down. Today I bring it down. May the flames of the spirit rest upon you so that the scroll of the word can be found and be eaten. So that the scroll of the word can be found and be eaten. Like Jeremiah, may you find truth and eat them. May you find truth in the scriptures and eat them in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we ask finally as a church that everyone perverting your word in this nation and other nations people that the devil has commissioned to misinterpret your word or shift things to ruin the lives of people, we declare that let your mercy take them out of your church. Deliver the elect from their hands, oh God. Deliver the elect from their hands, oh God. Make your word honorable again in the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone out there, wherever they are on the face of the earth, at home, in the hospital, wherever, I command be healed of every sickness. Receive deliverance from every oppression. May the blessing of the Lord rest upon you here today. And may the word of the Lord find expression in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's put our hand together for Jesus Christ. As we give him a big, big clap. Yeah, thank you, our dear viewers. Thank you for joining us today. We believe that God has blessed you and God has spoken to you from his word. By God's grace, on the first Sunday of uh, the next month, which is May, we'll come again with the word. I want to encourage you to go to my YouTube channel, which is on the screen right now, and follow us in the next service. Because in the next service, I'll be bringing a word on deliverance, how to obtain personal deliverance from God. So you go to my YouTube and follow us in that live service. The YouTube is very simple. Just type Apostle Takim. You will see a lot. But look for the present truth for present times. And you're going to see our YouTube and you follow us for the second service. Until then, we urge you to stay strong and do not forget that Jesus is coming soon. Put your hand together for everyone out there. Give God a mighty shout of praise. Give us God a mighty shout. A mighty shout! A mighty shout! Of Jesus, now more than ever, we are sailing a stormy weather. All God's children. Should get together. Oh, for we need Jesus now more than ever. Jesus now. Jesus now. More than ever. More than ever. 
is entering your spirit today in your day of manifestation you will be among the company of people in the body of christ that will be accurately interpreting the scriptures some of you will end up having ministries you end up having ministries some of you will end up having churches God, some of you will just be in the marketplace just big time businessmen and women but whoever meets you will get a revelation of, of the scriptures. God wants to restore back the test of his word to our generation. And you have been chosen. There are 75 of you. It's an uncommon service. When we're singing that song, Jesus, now more than ever, the Lord said to me, I am stirring the spirit of the interpreters of my will with that song. He said, sing it. That's why I was singing it. Sing it. He said, I am stirring the spirit. I am stirring the spirit. The Bible says that when Mary encountered the angel, God ordered her step to meet Elizabeth. That as soon as the voice, as soon as the voice of Mary was heard, the baby in Elizabeth kicked. Something is kicking in the spirit of someone that is going to function this end time as an interpreter of divine will divine will you will bring redemption to people i say you will bring redemption to people interpreters of divine will they bring redemption dream interpreters bring confusion interpreters of scriptures bring redemption dream interpreters bring confusion god want to replace all the sorcerers all the diviners that they call prophets with people that will accurately interpret his will it's your service. How many do we have left? It's 50. 53 left out of the 75. Holy Spirit. This is your moment, Lord. Holy Spirit. Touch the lives. Hey, my carnival. This is your moment. This is your moment, Lord. Holy Spirit, this is your time. Holy Spirit, this is your moment. Hey, my Kaposota. Holy Spirit, hey, this is your time. Holy Spirit, this is your moment, Lord. Let that hunger kindle. Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus that everyone you have picked, everyone you have found usable as interpreters of your will, let your power, let your power touch. everyone you have picked those that will interpret your will through songs those that will interpret your will through preaching through teaching holy ghost move. those that will sing understanding into hearts those that will sing revelation into hearts the power of god move. Those that will sing revelation, sing interpretation, sing revelation, sing interpretation into the hearts of men, into the hearts of women. Holy Ghost, touch! It's a moment. It's a moment. Reach out to your sons and your daughters. Reach out to your sons and your daughters. It's time for the Bible to be known again. It's time for the Bible to be known again. Let your power move. Touch the young women. Touch the young men. Touch the elderly. Touch the kids. Touch the children. Touch the kids. Touch the kids. Holy Ghost, move. That everyone will receive a seed. 
will receive a seed of a mantle will receive a seed of grace to become an interpreter of your word they will sing it they will preach it they will teach it they will spread it they will bring a great interpretation to your word they will be like the army of Gideon with touches in their hands let your power touch let no one be left behind 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 let your warriors hear the sound of the trumpet let no one be left behind that in this end time an army will replace the diviners an army will replace the sorcerers an army of interpreters of your will they'll be scattered across the nations they'll be scattered across the nations holy ghost touch every resistance in the life of anyone i break the resistance you are loose in the name of jesus you are loose from every satanic resistance you are loose you are free you are free everyone lift up of us and pray i receive the grace to unlock the scriptures i receive the grace to lose the seals open your mouth and pray i receive the grace to lose the seals i receive the grace to lose the seals i receive the grace to lose the seals lift up the voice and pray this is a moment something is happening here there is fire in the house there is fire in the house entering the spirit of just man there's a revolution there's a world revolution there's a world revival there's a world revolution i hear the lord saying i will raise up revivalists i will raise up revolutionaries that will bring world revolution that will bring world revolution that will bring world revolution if you're a child of god lift up your voice and pray if you're a child of god lift up your voice and pray lord i want to operate as one of the end time revivalists as one that you will use to bring war revolution revolution of scriptures revolution of your world revolution of your world that i will bring war revolution that 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 will bring one revolution. Rima sata le kaba sata. Reba ba 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 kende le koya ba. Reba ba 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 sata le kaya ba. Rima mo sata le kolo prasata ya. E kolo mo sata le kaya ba ba. Raba ba ba kende le kolo prasata ya. Reba ba 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 kende le kolo prasata le. Raka ba sata le kolo prasata ya. E kali masa teke le bosoto. Reba ba 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 kende le kaya ba. Rima mo sete le kolo prasete ya. Reba ba 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 kende le kolo prasete le. Rikolo mo sete le kala basata. Reba ba ba kende le kolo prasoto ya. E kali masa teke le prasoto. Reba ba 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 kende le kala ba. Pray the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Pray the Holy Ghost. Everyone lift up your voice, you're a child of God. Lord, I am here. I am here, Lord. Find me to use me. Tell the Lord, find me to use me. Find me, oh God, to use me. As one of those that will bring world revolution. Kindle my spirit with the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. 
the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. Kindle my heart with the flames of your spirit. I want to be used of you, Lord. I want to be used of you, Lord. I want to be used of you, Lord. To play a role this end time. I want to be used of you, Lord. To play a role in your kingdom this end time. We come on Saturday, Kaya Baba. We may have a Baba Baba Saturday. Rakolo Baba Saturday, Kaya Baba Baba. We may have a Kenya Lekolo Baba Saturday. Raba Baba Baba Kenya Lekolo Baba Saturday. Raba Baba 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 Kenya Lekolo Baba Saturday. Rebo Yabo Saturday, Kala Baba Saturday.
moment like this when the cloud of glory decides cannot Christians among us will still be looking dead the glory is here Christ is here in person if you cannot feel him then you are not part of him Christ is here in person the glory of the Lord the, if you cannot connect that glory now it means you have no part in him may God take away any veil The Lord said to me, I am refilling them. There are people God is refilling right now. I saw a vision where vessels are being refilled. Vessels are being refilled. God is refilling you. Wherever you are, yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. He's refilling you. I stand amazed in your presence. That was what David saw. He said, I will behold his beauty and choir at his temple. It's a season of infilling. Is it the time to be in the flesh? destinies have been turned around the flames of the Holy Ghost have been transmitted into the life of the sons and daughters of God right now the flames of the Holy Spirit have been transmitted there's a renewal God is taking away darkness and putting light he's taking away struggles spiritual struggles he's giving you liberty in the spirit is moving right now
between age 25. I won't begin with those who are between age 25 and 30. Listen. If you are between age 25 and 30, and you know that there's a call of God upon your life, you may not have known the clarity, but you feel it's under contention. You feel that you are going through things that will not allow the call of God in your life. Please come to the front. I need to pray for you. You are going through things that you are afraid. Will I really fulfill what God has come? Just stand this side. Stand this side at my left hand side. Just stand this way. Some can stand here in front of me. Okay, some can stand because of the spirit. You, you feel in your spirit. Now, I pray. When utter calls are made like this, everybody comes. But God just is talking to few. Because the Lord said to me, he wants to send a fire to, to, to run through your life right now. He wants to send a fire. The fire of God. So when you are coming, come with your spirit opened. Because you are coming to pick a fire. Somebody help. As I'm speaking, you see the fire falling already. Somebody help. There's a contention in your life. And God is saying, no. I am putting a fire in your life right now. We are standing in the template of the altar of God in heaven. A fire is going to come from God's altar in heaven. And it's falling upon you here right now. Open up your spirit as you come, as you stand. Just open up your spirit. It's happening already. Don't wait for me to pray. Just yield yourself. You are standing in the environment of the fire of God. It's, good. it's running right now in your spirit. There's a call upon your life that God wants to rescue. There's a call upon your life God wants to rescue. Rima setele kaya baba. Rika bushotole kala prashatole. There's a call. There's a call. There's a call. There's a call. God wants to rescue it. You are feeling a fire. It's like burning in your womb. You are feeling something hot within you. There's a call. God wants to rescue. Whoever God made me to call out, this power is reaching out to you already. Whoever he made me to call out, his power is reaching out to you already. He said, I want to rescue the Holy Seed. The Holy Seed is under contention. The Holy Seed is under contention. I want to reach out with my fire to burn everything within my people. That is a threat to the Holy Seed. The power of God is upon you. It's upon you. Yield yourself. Lift up your two hands and yield yourself. We are under the cloud of His glory. His power is upon you right now. We are not a cloud of his glory. It's the first Sunday of, of the month. The blessing of this month is already upon you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Those whose call is are under contention. You said you will send the fire. You said you will send the fire. You say you will send the fire. Now let it consume everything. Let it grant victory. Let it consume everything. Let it grant victory. Now the rest of you lift up your two hands as I pray. Those of you standing before me. There are ten more of you. Ten more of you standing. The power of God needs to come upon you. There are ten more of you. There are 10 more of you. The contention, the fire of God. There are 10 more of you standing. The fire of God is going to come upon you right now. There are 10 more of you. 10 more, more of you, 10. The, the fire of God is coming upon you right now. Holy Spirit, I ask, oh God, send help. Send help. Send help. The Holy Seed needs your fire. Send help. The Holy Seed needs the fire of your spirit. Send help. 
let your power touch for the sake of the holy seed for the sake of the holy seed how many do we have left one six for the sake of the holy seed for the sake of the holy seed i pray those who are entangled who are entangled in the different snakes and traps of the enemy i pray that your power will lose them lose them lose them right now lose them in the name of jesus in your mercy lose lose these warriors of yours there's someone you have dreams that pollute your life god is setting you free right now god is setting you free you have dreams that pollute your life god is setting you free there's someone that's an unclean spirit that normally come to defile you each time you want to rise each time you make up your mind an unclean spirit come to defy god is setting you free right now god is setting you free right now there's a young man that god have actually given you visions he has shown you the crowd you are going to speak to the crowd he has committed to your hand in the future the power is upon you right now take it he's wearing you the garment of power He's wearing you the garment of power. There's a flame of the spirit that God is using to just to just wrap you in. You must get to those people. You must get to the crowd the Lord has shown you in the vision. You must get to them. The gates of us shall not prevail against you. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you. May the hand of the Lord be upon you. To Jesus, I surrender all to Him. I freely give. Everyone sing it. I will ever. Lord. 
I pray for victory, Lord. Grant everyone victory from the darkness that is threatening their divine pregnancy, threatening your call upon their lives. I pray for the consecration of a divine call to wrap them right now. That your precious Holy Spirit begin to pull them into dimensions in the realm of grace that they have never seen before. That none of them will make a decision that will destroy their destiny. Watch over them, oh God. And I declare each and every one victorious by the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. May go back to your seat. For you are glorious and worthy to be praised. Little voice, let's tell you. You are the love. Everyone remains standing. We are still the moment. A voice to sing.
honor you, the lily of the valley, the bride and morning star. Thank you, Lord, for your dealings in our lives, for your fire, for your presence, for the infilling of your spirit, for raising interpreters of your will, for rescuing the lives of those who are calling our under contention. We thank you for your cloud of glory. Allegiance to him and tell him, For this God is my God. Let's tell him that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Holy God, to whom a praise is due, I stand.
are watching us live from the Apostolic Center of the Cry of the Spirit Ministries, Nairobi, Kenya. Stay tuned. We will be right back.